Hi once again and welcome to the final video lecture of the Plate Driving Forces lecture set. In this video lecture we're going to talk about ridge push and the drag force. And basically what we're going to do is go through the calculations of the ridge push and drag forces um, to give you a sense of the relative magnitude of those two forces compared to the slab pull force that was presented in the previous two video lectures. Now ridge push is a force that results uh, essentially from the elevation of oceanic ridges and the lithosphere near the ridges with respect to the rest of the seafloor. So you can see here highlighted in orange the elevated portion of the oceanic lithosphere near a spreading ridge and the force itself is basically uh, like a pressure head uh, the same kind of thing that would happen if you had um, fluid at higher elevation driving pressure uh, into some sort of lower elevation pipe or something like that. Uh, or you can consider this as an example of something like gravitational sliding where you simply have this elevated slab that's going to glide down along the asthenosphere toward the um, elevations of the ocean seafloor. So when we talk about ridge push, uh, as it turns out, there's basically three components that we need to consider and calculate. And those are the forces that are going to be acting on the top, bottom, and side of the oceanic lithosphere plate. So in other words, the ridge push is simply the force acting on the top minus the force on the bottom minus the force on the side. And that's how you get your ridge push. We can look at the picture here of our cross section through some cartoon version of the oceanic lithosphere. And um, you can see then water sitting on top of this asthenosphere that would be beneath it. And our uh, coordinate system is defined in a way such that y equals zero is at the top of the um, ridge. With this general picture, we can see there are a series of different forces labeled here, F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5. What we can say first off is that the horizontal force on the base of the plate, that's F1, that goes along here, that horizontal force has to be equal to the integrated lithostatic pressure in the mantle between the uh, point labeled R at the ridge and D down here at the depth um, of the base of the lithospheric plate. So if you integrate the pressure along that transect, that force needs to be equal to the force that's acting along the base of the plate. And I think that makes uh, a bit of sense. The horizontal force on top of the plate, that would be this set of vectors labeled F2, then must be equal to the integrated pressure in the um, integrated hydrostatic pressure from point A to point B. And so in that case, you're looking at the pressure as a result of the overlying water uh, from point A to B, from basically the elevation of the ridge down to the surface of the lithosphere where it reaches the sort of abyssal depths um, along this line AB. The third force we have to consider then is what's left, and that's the horizontal force acting on this piece of the, um, the lithospheric section that goes from B to C, and the horizontal force in that case is equal to the integrated pressure in the lithosphere from point B to point C. And uh, one thing to note here is that the pressure there should take into account the fact that there's water sitting on top of the lithosphere. So those are our three parts. Uh, the method for dealing with these is essentially, well, we know at a constant depth, the pressure is simply rho gy uh, at some depth y. And if we want to then calculate the pressure um, that's integrated, from one depth to another, we simply take the integral from the starting depth to the final depth of rho gy uh, dy. And if you integrate that, then that will give you the integrated pressure. So if we were to then calculate all of those integrated pressures and go back to our original relationship for the ridge push force, remember we had this F1 minus F2 minus F3, the force along the base minus the force on the top and the force on the side. And if we did a little bit of uh, mathematical rearrangement, you'll basically come out with a relationship for the ridge push that looks like this, 
where you have gravity times the mantle density times this coefficient of volumetric expansion. The temperature at the base and top, so that's the mantle temperature and the temperature at the plate surface, times 1 plus 2 over pi times the mantle density times the coefficient of volumetric expansion times the temperature difference, again, divided by the difference in density between the mantle and water times the thermal diffusivity times time. And so here you see something perhaps a little bit interesting. Time comes into the equation, of course, because oceanic lithosphere is going to be cooling and thickening as it moves away from the spreading ridge. So that's where the time dependence comes in. And if we were to again use our typical values and plug in some numbers here, we come up with a ridge push force that's on the order of 4 times 10 to the 12 newtons per meter. And if you remember from the previous lecture about the slab pull force, this is about an order of magnitude smaller than slab pull. The last force we can talk about then is the drag force, which is the force that's going to be acting along the base of the lithosphere along its length. And this is a force that can, as mentioned in the first lecture, either drive or resist tectonic motion, depending on the relative motions of the lithospheric plates compared to the underlying mantle. But essentially, it's a force where the mantle is flowing beneath the lithosphere, and the viscous uh, coupling between the two um, can either drive or resist motion. And so there's a viscous flow that will take place across a given thickness of the mantle um, as we've seen previously. And then our drag force is actually a relatively simple relationship here where we have the asthenosphere uh, viscosity times the uh, velocity difference between the overriding plate and the asthenosphere uh, at depth divided by the thickness of the viscous layer times the length of the plate. So, of course, this is a very simple uh, relationship in this case, and it's something kind of like the Kuwait flow type of motion um, that we might expect in terms of the velocity field. And if we put in our typical numbers here, what we see is that we get a drag force that's on the order of 1 times 10 to the 13 newtons per meter, which is, again, comparable to the size of the slab pole force. So, drag force is pretty significant. The... Um, Ridge push is maybe less significant, and slab pull is certainly a big one. So that's it, and it's time once again for the last quiz on the plate driving forces. And we'll continue in the next set of video lectures to start talking about deformation of the lithosphere and the rheology of the Earth.